Morning everyone, hope everyone is well. Um, in this video I'm going to give you a little MIDI tutorial about the Volker sample. Now, um, I find I'm using the Volker sample, this is the original one, yeah, no, no USB loading samples through 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 the uh, the sync in through a WAV file. Yeah, that crazy old system. Um, however, um, I find I'm using this drum machine like a, a lot lately. I didn't use it for a long time. Didn't use it because of the sort of the, the faff of loading samples. Um, but I find now I have I have a bunch of samples loaded onto it, like it's almost full. And then, and, and then, so my, my, my strategy is, that is what it is now. I've got kick snares, weird little blippy effects. That It's 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 an immutable thing now. Um, but still, you know, it's like there's, there's plenty of stuff on there um, that, that I use. And as I say, um, it has a very nice crunchy sort of sound. Um, and as I say, I do find myself using it a lot. This is a MIDI tutorial, so we're going to ignore the internal sequencer. I know, you know, some people like working with MIDI because they can sort of see things on their computer monitor uh, and they could drag notes around. And I know for a lot of people that that is a way that they prefer to work. Um, so this is this is this is essentially this this little tutorial. Um, let's yeah. The downsides of this, as well as the sample loading, which is a bit of a faff, I do have a tutorial. It's, it's four years old now, but I watched it this morning and I think it's still fairly sound. Um, another downside is this is a noisy unit in my hands, in my hands, with this cable set up, with this power supply. Um, so, like, that's the, that's the mixer, like way up and I've, I'm, I'm, I'm going via a compressor on, on, on an insert so you can hear that shh. now today I'm powering it from um, a little sort of you know um, USB battery pack last night I was doing some tracking with a power cable you know the Korg you know the, the yellow one similar deal similar deal I probably have used it with batteries before, um, but I don't want to. I don't want to crack out a load of batteries and just 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 for this. So, as I say, in my hands, in this setup, it is a bit of a noisy unit, but it does have a kind of gloriously lo-fi, crunchy sort of sound. So, if you know, if that's something that that that, that, you, that you're going for, um, you know. Yeah, maybe pick one of these up second hand. These are pretty cheap now, especially because they bought out a version 2, right? That had like a proper way of transferring samples. Um, but as I say, sometimes it's good, you know, to, to work with the, with the, let's turn this off. It's just so, so noisy. Sometimes it's good to work within those limitations and just go, okay, this is, this is the gear. Um, okay, this is what, this is what I'm working with. Fine. Let's, let's see what we can do. Um, yeah, so Volker sample, working with MIDI might be useful to some people. Let's go. Let me start by just showing you the hardware setup. So it's coming out of my computer, um, to my USB to MIDI interface uh, channel three out of there into the CM1A here. But essentially, I'm just using that as a through box because it's this MIDI cable uh, coming from the MIDI through that goes into there. Um, so, so I could come straight from my USB MIDI interface or my you know, or, or, or the MIDI from my sound card or audio interface. Could do that. Could do that. But this is just the way it's set up. Um, the audio out goes straight into the board. I am um, have got an insert to the FMR audio compressor. Um, recording these through a compressor, <laughs> it sounds really nice, uh, and that's a pretty, pretty nice compressor. But also, yeah, you know, I, I can I can bypass the compressor if 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 I need to. Um, it's set pretty aggressively, I have to say, just to, just to, just to have the compressor actually actually do anything. So I wouldn't say it's necessary. It's just a sort of creative decision. It's there. I might as well plumb it in. That's the hardware setup. Um, so we can hear each each drum. Yep. Yeah, so ten 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 drums. Um, I probably have some 
I have the ability to put reverb in on this unit. So there's there's some there's some reverb. Um, and I think the volume of this is yeah is, is is maxed out. Okay. So that's the hardware setup. Now there's some software sort of considerations to bear in mind, including like what we want to do with clock and obviously the, the MIDI setup. Now, the punchline with the Volker sample, this is the original version one OG uh, Volker sample. Each of your 10 drums is on channels one to 10, right? Let that sink in for just a second. Each drum voice is on its own channel. Not its own note, it's on its own channel, which is an is an is it's 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 an interesting way to do the implementation. Um, the in my opinion, in my opinion, the better way is to have each each sort of drum sound, each drum note, each drum channel um, on a different note, um, because it makes the MIDI programming a little bit easier. However, it is what it is. Um, so let's look at how I've set up my Reaper project. But the same would be true of Logic, Ableton. Um, um, so I've got a Reaper project that is only for sort of making um, drum loops for this particular project I'm working on. This is what's going on here. So as, as I said, each like drum voice, of which there are 10, is on its own MIDI channel which makes the, the MIDI programming a little bit insane. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Now, let me just show you. Now, depending on what DAW you're using, your, um, your interface will look a bit different. But what we must make sure we want to do in this case is we're not going to send clock to the device. If we do send clock, that will start the Volker sample, like that'll start its internal sequence of playing. Now, we might want that for some use cases where we want to program the Volker sample, then just take the DAW uh, tempo. But in this case, we're just saying, I want to ignore the Volker sample um, internal sequencer and only program it with MIDI. So therefore we must ensure that clock is, t is, is, is off. OK. And output. Yes, we want to output. Um, so let's. Yeah, uh, let's, we'll hear this now. Just to explain, I'm using my closed hi hat almost as a count in and a count out. That means when I record the audio, I've got a nice um, sort of sort of tail in and tail out uh, that just helps for. Um, yeah, sort of organizing the recording. just a, there we go it's just a sort of an, an outro and then obviously when what i've done like previously i've then just just recorded it in um and then chop chopped up exported it okay so i mean there could be a number of ways of doing this but essentially you know we've got a kick channel we've got a snare we've got closed hi-hat and open a hi-hat now i've put these on channels three and four that doesn't necessarily make sense for the Volker sample because I believe the choke channels are 9 and 10. What that means is you can set it up so when you trigger a sample in channel 10, that will choke off channel 9. So this is the way, sort of like, it's, it tries to mimic a real hi-hat where when, you know, obviously you can play an open hi-hat and that is choked off when you depress the pedal of the hi-hat and you get that closed hi-hat sound so if you're working smarter you'd put your your hi-hats on nine and ten but you know just for, for these particular samples you know the, the choke effect is is not really needed um you know because the, the open hi-hat doesn't ring out for like three seconds so um, what else 
can I show you that is helpful? So obviously in Reaper, what I'm able to do is nest all of these 10 channels uh, into something called a folder. Um, what's very cool about this, obviously I've got some, some nice U UI control over that. Also, I only need to worry about sending MIDI over the folder rather than each channel um, sent to original channels that's important because then if we go into kick obviously the note doesn't doesn't make any doesn't doesn't make any difference you know it doesn't matter where you know the doesn't matter the pitch right it doesn't matter the pitch it's only going to be the kick because if we go note channel there we go that's on channel one okay now obviously we could put it we could put some more snares in but we're only here in the kick, right? Because as defaults, you know, this is put this is putting it into channel channel one. But you know, we can select these and, and channel two. So we could we could put all our MIDI onto onto one, you know, on all, all our programming. Well let me let me just let me just solo this so you can hear that. So there's the two kicks we've added. Right. And then we could we could, you know, but See what's confusing about this setup is, is those could be the same note, right? Those could be the same note. Um, now we know they're channel two, right? Um, but then if you open this six months later, you'd look at that and you'd go, "What? You know, what's going on?" Because then you could put, you know, you could put a, a hi hat in there. Uh, we know that's on channel three. Put another hi hat in there. Put that onto channel three. Right. But that is so confusing. Okay, let's get rid of these other things we've added. It's just it's it's too confusing. Um now to make things less confusing, you could obviously you could say, well I'll just I'll just for my knowledge, I'll put my snare onto C sharp. Um you know, and, 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 and sort of, you know, you could use note mapping that, that you know from other bits of hardware, right? Um, and, you know, I think often, you know, hi-hat is B-flat and, and, and A-flat, open hi-hat, closed hi-hat. Toms are often F, G and A. So, you know, you could use a sort of pitch vocabulary that, that you sort of know and love. Um, that is fine as long as you've got your sort of, um, you know, you, all your channels uh, sorted. As I say, for me, just to make things clearer, you know, when I look at this, you know, two, three, four months down the line, if I've got, you know, I've got a kick channel, I've got a snare channel, I've got hi-hat channels. The other advantage of this way of working, even though you're generating a lot, a lot of tracks, right? Ten tracks just to record one loop. Um, but I think, you know, obviously I can just solo my cymbal. There we go. That's a cymbal track. And then if I wanted, yeah, so here I think I'm just making a loop that is literally just a cymbal. Yeah, there we go. For the So this audio loop will be just cymbal. And then this next audio loop is just a variation of this guy, right? literally the same midi except i've stripped out the symbol i've stripped out the hi-hat open and closed uh, i've stripped out the snare and i've kept kept the kick which sounds like this oh uh unsolo the symbol sounds like this versus like the full the full loop So, I mean, so there we go. I mean, you know, working with MIDI for the Volca sample, it it generates a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Having said that, this is this is just to help me stay organized within a project. Um, also, by generating, you know, by having a dedicated sort of project just for my loops, then I don't need to spawn all these 10 tracks in, in, in like the main project I'm working on. So then, you know, we're starting to deal with like 20 or 30 tracks because then I've got all my MIDI tracks for all my, you know, my bass, my lead pads and all that stuff. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, and then, you know, I can control the tempo. Obviously, I could change the tempo. I could then, you know, just start introducing variation by by sort of introducing, like, variations in these other sort of percussion-y sort of... You know, and I could start, you know, sort of just, you know, go, oh, well, yeah, we, yeah, we like those, but we want a bit of variation there. Let's just have something there, something there. And then for this, we'll just, it's like a maraca kind of thing. We'll just copy some more, have a bit of variety. So then we've got, if, you know, <laughs> if I wanted to do that, um, um, just to sort of have, you know, variations of the loops that I'd then, you know, record those and uh, add them to my main okay, project. I've just opened the Reaper project where these Volker sample loops are going to live. So we can see we've got some, you know, we've got, you know, mu musical MIDI, you know, we've got some Neutron FX, Volker keys, SH101, modular synth. Although at the moment, these are all sort of plugins that I'm just, just basically, this is like a, a sketch. Um, I tracked some guitar last night. I recall this sounding pretty good. Let's just press this button so we can hear it. That sounds good, doesn't it? Um, and dr yeah, okay, here we go. So we got a drum loop, which I believe that's an old drum brute loop. Um, with um, a bit of ring modulator because why wouldn't you and then this guy Volker sample loops so you can see I've just imported I think this is just the cymbal loop yeah pew, pew. Um, and then this is one of the loops I'm using a heavy bit of multiband compression just to get it sounding nice and fat. And I'm also using distortion because, you know, it's definitely the Volker sample is definitely a lo-fi kind of drum machine. So I'm kind of leaning into that. So you can see I've sort of generated a few variations of the drum loop, which I'm then using my sort of colouring to sort of help me discriminate between the different loops. And let's give you, in the mix, this is just a sketch of a track at the moment. Um, yeah, I don't, I mean, you know, as I say, this is, this is a workflow that I kind of, you know, like working with, you know, is I like working with MIDI. I like working with Loopso as well. And, and this is a kind of sort of weird hybrid sort of workflow where I'm, where I'm essentially working with both. Um, the disadvantage of this is if I'm thinking like, if I'm listening to this and I'm going, you know, Oh, I don't know. That's just, just I don't know. Not really, not really loving that 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 loop. You know, then got to go. Oh, okay, got to go back. Open that project. Uh, yeah, I'll save changes. <laughs> I don't think I made any change. You know, go back to my project where I'm building these. Program something different, something new. You know, which is I don't know, possibly a bit of a faff. Um, I mean, partly I kind of like. I I like the separation because it's kind of organization wise I, I i like that but yeah if you then got again go and program something different yeah i don't know anyway it is what it is there we go thanks for watching folks this is the end of the video um i 
still obviously got the like the, the new old refurbished macbook air that's upstairs at the moment uh i mean been enjoying using that um obviously i'm looking at the analog labs and the the behringer vintage um at the moment i've kept everything i've shown you i've kept nothing's been deleted yet um but the hard that hard drive space is sort of rapidly diminishing um i was going to do a video about loading up with sample based instruments but Mm, given the hard drive space, I need to just stop, stop and, and, and think a bit more carefully about that. Um, there may be ways, obviously, using sample based libraries off external hard drives. But I just need to do a few more tests with that. All right. That's the end of the video. Bye, 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 bye.